All right, we are recording. Do we have a note taker? I can take notes. Perfect, thank you, Jim. All right, the sheet is in the chat. Um, go ahead and add your name to the attendees list and we will get started. Uh, welcome everybody to February the 25th, DevCore JS All our weekly sync. Um, we're going to go over what we did last week, what we're blocked on, and what we've got going on this week. And I will get started since I am first. Um, I've got a work in progress for the pull implex going into JS IPFS. Uh, I do need to do some IPFS interop tests, some more of those. I fixed an issue last week where it was having issues with high throughput, so like file exchanges. Um, there was some memory issues there, fixed that, and then looked at benchmarks between it and libp2p implex, uh, and pull implex is performing better now. So I'm gonna do some more interop testing this week um, before releasing that to JSIPFS. Uh, added Unix protocol support for JS multi-adder. I also updated the protocol table there because um, it was a bit out of date. So that should be in a better spot. That's released as 6.05. Um, did a small update for the JS libp 2 b config to make it less restrictive. It was a bit too restrictive on transports. Um, and then a slew of updates for the JS libp 2 b daemon to help with the test bed and libp 2 b interrupt tests. Um, there's currently an issue with highlight.js that's blocking some of the builds. Um, so we're just working around that in the meantime. Um, that's from, that's an eight-year dependency through documentation.js. This week, gonna work on the pull implex interop testing and then uh, work on better support for listen, announce, and note, announce addresses for JS libp 2 p Does anybody have any questions for me? Okay. There is nobody in the list, so I am just gonna go by video. Oh, there it is. I was cached. Sorry. All right, Volker. Um, so um, I was working on um, IPLD selectors. Um, <laughs> And I kind of implemented it what is a draft spec, if for anyone who's interested in the stuff, can check it out. Um, then also we had in the uh, graph sync, um, we had discussions about the wire protocol and um, we ended up with a protocol that was proposed, but I did a write up um, how I would do things with lib P2P and just also like if people are interested in those kind of things, check it out as well. Um, then I worked a bit on the JS IPLD APIs, um, LN gave feedback, and now it's really way better code. So he, his big ask was to change from mixing promises and callbacks to just using Chrome Missify for the callback stuff. And this really makes the code way cleaner and way easier. So if anyone's porting something from for the async await endeavor, I really um, propose that instead of mixing promises and callbacks, just using Chrome PC5 for the old stuff. This makes the code really easy and clean. And I'm not blocked. And next, or this week, I really hope that get finally get the IPLD API thing merged. And yeah, just do some more work on the selector stuff. That's all for me. Awesome, any questions for Volker? All right, next up, uh, Vashko. Hey guys, so basically last week uh, uh, the interop, uh, uh, between interop pull request for the test setup and uh, identify plus connect uh, was merged. And uh, I also start the DHT interop uh, test. Uh, basically, uh, we, have a few, we have tests in uh, the IPFS for get inputs where I will uh, this time make tests for all the, the all the available functions that we have, like find providers, uh, find peer, among others. 
Then um, I also moved a bunch of repos to Travis CI. And uh, I also added a pull request for adding errors, error, error codes for uh, PubSub and DHT in lib 2 p uh, in order to afterwards uh, verify them in GSAPFS. Uh, blocked like uh, Jacob with a highlight uh, problem. Uh, for now, I would recommend that people that want or need to do npm install, that basically you can uh, do npm install first of uh, highlight.js master branch. And from there, you you are able to at least for now work and install your dependencies. And uh, so for this week, I will uh, finally, hopefully tomorrow, uh, debug the CPU usage on Sky in GSFFS, which is also triggering a lot of uh, uh, locking in the repo. Uh, then I also want to migrate uh, the last repos that I have to the Travis CI. I didn't finish them because uh, um, some of them uh, are with uh, really old uh, dependencies and I wanted to also upgrade the dependencies, but uh, as some of them are breaking changes, I have to also uh, fix tests and other, and other stuff. That's why I didn't finish the, all the migration to repo for Travis CI. And finally, uh, I will continue the interop tests. I want this week to finish the, the DHT interop tests PR and uh, also create the pull requests for uh, the GSLP2P demand and GSLP2P demand client for adding PubSub and consequently uh, start also the PubSub interop test. That's everything for me. Anyone has comments or questions? Yep, awesome. Thank you, Vashko. Next up, Hugo. Hi, guys. So last week, did a bunch of Travis stuff, a um, bunch of uh, pull requests, reviews, uh, some debugging on the Windows environment. Still not sure what's breaking the Windows on libp2p, but it's an ongoing uh, debugging uh, session with, uh, with the Travis support. Um, still on the Travis topic, uh, we we need to be like careful what with what we how much time we spent on it because uh, some news got out that uh, the company that bought Travis is kind of as a reputation of not kind of keeping talent in the company, and some of them are already being like. Uh, fired and stuff like that. So the probability of we getting a good stable Windows environments on Travis is getting lower and lower. So we need to uh, see what's, what we can do to keep our CI stable. But let's see what the future holds. Uh, also did a bunch of work on the P2P one of size pull requests. That's basically done should be released on the next lip p release. Um, also worked on the HTTP client uh, pull request for the bundle size that's uh, basically done also. And on the JS IPFS uh, side uh, also almost done, just waiting for the lip p 2 release. <laughs> Created a, a, a new module to convert pull streams to streams, just to reduce the number of uh, readable streams versions on the bundle sizes. If anyone is still interested in that stuff, you can check it out in the, uh, on the link I put there. Uh, uh, I'm blocked on the lip p release and on the IYJS issue. And for the rest of the week, uh, I want to finish the JSIPFS bundle pull requests, finally get to the benchmark integration and uh, multi-hashing multi async, uh, async await pull requests uh, that we probably gonna have a conversation tomorrow to see if we start to merge some stuff or not. Yeah, but for the rest of it, that should be it. Anyone has any questions? 
No. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Google. Uh, next up, Adin. Hey. Uh, so just very briefly, um, I've been uh, looking through a lot of the sort of proposed IPNS improvements that have come up over time, uh, and I'd like to actually make some of them happen. Um, I'm trying to categorize like the relative importance uh, of the improvements. So not generic things like I want faster, please, but instead like, you know, let's have PubSub do this in order to make it go faster. Um, so those are there. Uh, if, if you have any interest, like, please, uh, please comment. Thanks. And if you have any questions, I'm, I'm here too. Awesome. Any questions for Adin? All right, next up, Zane. Cool. Uh, nothing much here. I uh, filed a new PR for data store FS, um, awesome async endeavor. Uh, and then we'll be doing the same thing for data store core, so that way all the sort of data store dependent projects can link and test and all that jazz. So uh, that's it. Sweet. Any questions for Zane? It's not Lytle. Um, just, uh, just added a quick check to this IPFS library. It's a library used in various projects for uh, detecting IPFS resources. Uh, and uh, a simple check for uh, telling if a string or a buffer is some or the other was requested uh, by multiple people. So I just added that. But in the process, I uh, also uh, fixed a small problem with uh, a multi other format. Uh, the readme said that it uh, supports buffer, but it actually did not. So there's like an open PR I created to, to fix that. And I need that to, to merge uh, the multi other check uh, support to this IPFS. Um, I think it's, it was probably already mentioned I had a, like a connectivity issue and joined the late. Uh, I'm also sort of blocked with uh, on uh, this uh, highlight JS uh, thingy. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, JS core related stuff for me. My plan, if anything goes well, is to revisit uh, Chrome Sockets APIs in Brave. Uh, after, like, to recheck uh, what's the status of that with uh, JS IPFS after we switch to have a happy 18. Uh, what APIs are missing and like basically uh, situation, I expect situation to change a little bit now that we've moved to happy 18. And that's all. Awesome. Any questions for Lytle? Here we go. On the sockets stuff, uh, how much do you need to like polyfill node APIs to get it to work? Yeah, so that's basically uh, the the first step is to see what's missing. Um, there there already exist polyfills for to to expose net and HTTP uh, uh, modules from nodes using uh, Chrome Sockets APIs as a backend, uh, but those were created around node six. So I expect some stuff to be missing. And okay. the, the, the goal is just to identify what's missing. We probably, I expect we'll probably end up with forking existing polyfills or creating our own, but it's like exploratory work to tell what's, like, what, what's work remains to be done. Okay, so for the HTTP part, um, I already did a, a fork from uh, stream HTTP. Um, that is on my uh, on my GitHub, and actually, uh, we can talk about this later. But I have a branch that is already a, a dependency of HTTP client, J, uh, IPFS HTTP client, that I will pr probably just like create another or another package for it, so we can iterate on the stuff you need in that specific module. 
regarding to net it's going to be way harder <laughs> but yeah 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 we'll see thanks Cool. All right, that's it for the list. We do have a couple of extra folks on the call. Um, I'll just go down if anybody wants to say hi or tell us what they're working on. Um, Dirk or Shaku or Porsche or Miguel. Hey, what's up? I'm Dirk. Um, Today I'm just kind of lurking, but uh, yeah, this week I've been working on doing some async awaits, like converting some libraries from callbacks to async awaits. So I'm working on JSIPNS, uh, record store, and working on the, the DHT as well. Awesome. Glad to see you on the call. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Um, so I'm a lot less technical than a lot of people on this call, but I've been in the FDFS fight for a while. Uh, I'm here from the IRC and Discord. Uh, I've been working on on this uh, on this app of ours that uh, essentially is aiming to make it easier for journalists to uh, to write and not be censored. And we're doing that by using JSFDFS, and we want to use it now locally so you can write your stuff and what you know and what your article. Um, um, Going around with that, trying to figure out how they make everything work. Well, that's that. Awesome. It's glad to have you on the call. Hey, um, I'll go real quick. Uh, this is Michael. Uh, so, yeah, I've been working on a lot of uh, metrics collection stuff um, so that we can try to understand the growth of the ecosystem on top of IPFS. Um, so, I just finished up. Um, a working like big map filter thing on top of uh, Lambda. So it basically looks at the GitHub archive tarballs, which is every, it's all the metadata for everything that happened globally in GitHub. And uh, so we, we run through all of that in parallel and basically filter and pluck the data out that we need. Um, and you can give it like essentially a list of thousands of repositories. So we can go and pull all the dependencies for JSIPFS for instance and then give that repository list, and then we end up with a subset of all, that's, all that ever happened in GitHub about all of those repositories. So that works. You can pull a month of data in about five or seven seconds, roughly. Um, you, eventually, you'll be able to pull a year in that amount of time once I get the AWS to increase my Lambda limit. There's, there's a limit of 1,000 concurrent uh, processes right now. So it needs to get up for us to do a year at a time. Um, but you can basically pull a year by just waiting, doing a month at a time right now. Um, so yeah, that's like basically working, um, should see some metrics coming out this week about the kind of growth and, and, uh, status of contributors across the whole kind of dependent ecosystem. Um, uh, that's it. Nice. Did you just put in a request with Amazon to up that limit? So I put in a request with our infra team to ask them because I don't I, I just have API keys. <laughs> like um I mean my API keys like have I think admin privileges over some resources, but I still can't like they don't have billing access. So uh, I need the infra team to ask for that. <laughs> but yeah, okay. I can ask them to nice. ask for it. I know people that have gotten it in the past, uh so it is like a thing that can happen, but when you ask AWS to increase it, they like want to talk to you about your use case so that they like write that kind of thing down, I guess. <laughs> um so so yeah, I expect it will take a little bit of time for that to happen. Yeah. All right. Anybody else? Portia? You are muted. I'm sorry. There we go. Hey, everyone. Um, I am working on um, refactoring a promise and um, making it in weight. I have to like create a test for it and some docs. I already have a PR for it. Um, once again, I need to put docs, get it a test out, and then um, people can look at it again. So that's what I've been working on. Great. All right. I think that is everybody. Um, does anybody have anything else they want to talk about? Adin? Yeah, I guess um, I just had a question, given that if any of the, the IPNS stuff is going to involve modifications to how 
uh, you know, PubSub or gossiping works, what the, the status is of, I know there's like a, a group working on gossip sub for JS IPFS now, or JS lib P2P now. What's the process of, of that or, or migrating that into core? Of getting JS gossip sub migrated into core? Yeah. Yeah, so um, Vashko's been working. Oh, go ahead, Vashko. I can, yeah, I can talk. Uh, basically, uh, Mike here did the uh, initial implementation without uh, tests yet, but I, I got her uh, a review for initial feedback. Now she she had like last week uh, for working on it again. Uh, I I will try to look this week uh, to check it, but I think the plan uh, is uh, for them. They want to have the gossip implementation by the end of March, and uh, this uh, will include uh, interrupt tests as well with the uh, PHP. So. Uh, I would like to have by the end of March uh, a PubSub uh, implementation of Gossip Sub available for uh, JS IPFS. I'd ask your question, Adeem. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that answers it. Thanks. Cool. Anybody else have anything? I had one thing in regards to, so we've been talking about. Um, package locks and shrink wraps and assessing that, um, using that. I think with the recent highlight JS issue, um, that is more, more important to get that done. Um, I commented a little bit ago on the Azure update um, that uh, Hugo started, the PR. I think it might be worth just using shrink wrap on Azure and vetting that out for a bit, um, just piloting that because that will solve that particular problem of having dependencies update and break builds and prevent us from doing development um, without manually circumventing that. Um, does anybody have opinions on that? Uh, yeah, I agree. Um, basically, I really liked the suggestion you made about like, doing the nightly build or whatever to like validate that we don't like break stuff for the um, upstream users regarding to like start shrink wrapping Azure. Uh, I'm not sure um, uh, that would be like uh, a good way, a uh, good spot to start because basically Azure is like tooling. It's not really uh, something that we, care much about like some app developer using it and breaking their, their app. So I'm not really sure if that's the, the best spot to, to demo or test that. Maybe some other lead like multi-formats or whatever. Would well, the reason I think that it would be beneficial to use to do shrink wrap on Azure is that we just had like all of our JS developers have issues running like JS IPFS and JS lib P2P and new builds because we have some tertiary dependency of Azure that's breaking a build. So adding shrink wrap would prevent us from getting in a situation where like our development is being halted. Yeah, 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 sure. Uh, but the thing is for this specific problem, uh, I think the, the best uh, solution is package lock and not shrink wrap. That's my only issue. Um, so yeah, I don't know. We need to discuss a little bit, but uh, we can try it, definitely. OK, we can follow up in the uh, issue. Anybody else? All right, if there is nothing, we can end there. Um, thanks, everybody, for coming. And hopefully, we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody.